Welcome to um, my periscope, the shift scope, the shift scope. Uh, my name is Tequita Baker, and today we're going to be talking about the myths and truths of forgiveness. So if you, um, if you will, can you swipe uh, and share the broadcast so that others who may need deliverance and healing from unforgiveness can be a part of the scope? Uh, you can share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, share it with your followers. That would be great. Okay. Again, my name is Tequita Baker, and I am the leader of Kingdom Shifters Ministries in Muncie, Indiana. Uh, you can learn more about our ministry at kingdomshifters.com. I also have a uh, counseling business. It, it's called Kingdom Wellness uh, Counseling and Mentoring Center. Um, I am a uh, master's degree counselor, uh, and I'm also a, a minister. So um, my focus is bridging mental health with deliverance and healing um, so that people can have true skills uh, that they can sustain in their deliverance and healing. So that's my biggest focus as far as my business and then as far as kingdom shifters. Oh, we're just all about doing the Lord's work in the earth and making sure atmospheres, people, and um, regions or communities are being transformed for the kingdom of God. So you can learn more about that. Hello to everybody that keeps saying hello to me. I'm uh, I'm gonna learn how to be interactive today. So if you have any questions uh, as we go along. Uh, write them down and then at the end I'll give you a chance to ask uh, your questions. Um, and before we pray. So you'll have a chance to ask questions or what have you. Uh, I don't know how well I could do with trying to read the screen and my notes. So, but if you write your questions down, I'll definitely get to them. Uh, also on Facebook, uh, so you can Facebook me or message me your, uh, your, your questions if you have questions about this scope. But I really um, just woke up this morning and I started to do um, a search on forgiveness and the Lord just began to give me some nuggets about uh, the difference between true forgiveness and unforgiveness and how to really forgive. Oftentimes we'll tell people, you need to forgive, you need to forgive. Um, or what have you and I know for myself I've even said that forgiveness is a supernatural ability that you have to ask God for his supernatural ability to forgive um, but as I was studying today um, it, there is a principle to forgiving and uh, when we work the principles then the manifestation of forgiveness comes and I know there's a lot of situations in our lives that happen where it's very difficult to forgive uh, we have uh, challenges where um, we may have been raped or molested or you know people have betrayed us and uh, it seems very difficult to forgive uh, but God's principle about forgiveness never changes so uh, he doesn't want us to hang on to those things so we have to figure out uh, how to really walk in his uh, principles of forgiveness so that we can release even the hard challenges, even the difficult challenges. So that is one of the things that I am going to kind of talk about today. So I'm just going to get started. And while we're starting, you can uh, ask people to join by um, swiping left, uh, uh, swiping left to right or up and down, depending on what kind of phone you have, and sharing this broadcast. So as I studied uh, forgiveness in the scriptures. I'm not going to read all the scriptures because that's easy to do. You could just, you know, do a Google search on forgiveness and all the scriptures will come up. So I'm not going to go over all the scriptures today. But uh, as I was searching out the scriptures, I noticed that forgiveness is always mentioned in relations to sin. So whether the sin was done by us or against us, uh, unforgiveness is linked to a sin or a trespass. So a lot of the scriptures about forgiveness uh, discusses sin or some type of transgression. Okay, so when we need to forgive, it is often because somebody has hurt us. Uh, but the other challenge with the need to forgive is that it is a sin not to forgive. So even though um, someone hurts us, 
uh, or we cause the hurt, a transgression has occurred. And if we hold on to that hurt, we are thus in sin. Okay. So sometimes we need to forgive ourselves and even ask God to forgive us because some of the situations that we put ourselves in that causes hurt. Uh, or because of our own sins or because of we sin by being a part of that situation or allowing that person to be in our life or, or whatever the case may be. So uh, forgiveness kind of works hand in hand, and we're going to see that as we go along. So I want to talk about what true forgiveness is. True forgiveness is when you are no longer trying to punish the person for what they have done. So you're not trying to punish them. You're not wishing ill will upon them. Um, that's one of the ways that you would know if you have truly forgiven. When you can talk about them and about uh, or talk to them without wanting to subtly or blatantly put them in their place or to hurt them, then that can also be an indication that you have truly forgiven. OK, uh, but if you're talking to them and then something kind of rise up in you and you just really want to tell them off or it, 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 it's a good time, I could just really get back at them right now. If you're even having those thoughts, there's an indication that you have not really released that situation. OK, uh, when you are not constantly putting up barriers with them or with others to protect yourself from being hurt again, but when you peacefully rest in the wisdom that you have gained from that situation and you know that you have the skills not to let it happen again, then you are you probably have forgiven. However, if you don't have the confidence um, that it won't happen again, and if you're constantly putting up barriers to protect yourself from others and for that person from hurting you, you probably have not forgiven, okay? Because there's a confidence and a boldness that comes with forgiving. There's a power that comes with forgiving. So if you are confident in your power, you uh, then you're, you are really release those situations. You won't be operating rating in insecurity. So you have, you are confident in your power not to let it happen again and not being insecure where these walls are erected from the hurts and pains. Okay. So if, if you're not confident and there's some type of insecurity and fear there, then that's not true forgiveness. Okay. When you can talk and testify of a situation without reliving the pain Reliving the hatred, reliving the animosity and the agony of it, uh, then you probably have forgiven. And the challenge with this is people will give up, get up, especially in church, and we'll give our testimony. And that person just crying and they're running around and they're having this just emotional breakdown. And we are shouting because we think they are healed and, you know, or whatever, when really they may not be healed. So it's very important to discern that they may be um walking in a, a level of faith at that moment, or they may think they're healed, but all in their mind and in their heart and in their body, there's all this pain that is going on. And we see that so much in the body of Christ. Uh, or we'll talk about a situation, we'll, our girlfriends will be going through something and then we'll be like, uh, yeah, I went through that and uh, I was really hurt by that, but girl, you got to forgive him. And yeah, and he did this to me and that to me and all why they're doing and all this anger come up and all these frustrations and hurt and pain and you crying and then they crying you probably have some unresolved challenges where you probably have not yet fully forgiven yet and so you want to really be aware of that because a lot of times we think oh i told my testimony today or i, I told somebody i shared my issue with someone and it really helped them but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have forgiven and truly have been delivered you just were able to talk about it okay also, a lot of times when we can't feel the pain anymore, we think we have forgiven, but numbness is not the same as forgiveness. So if you are, if you are numb about a situation, then really you have stuffed your pain due to hurt and bitterness. You have stuffed it in effort not to feel, okay? So numbness is not forgiveness, 
okay um and a lot of times you can tell when you are numb because when you start talking about the situation you start to get choked up or things arise up in you you'll start to feel panicky or fear or you, you the, the pain will try to start to manifest itself but because of your own um uh, because you're a stuffer or because of your need to just push that down and suppress it, you swallow it. So you, you swallow it and you just keep on talking about it, but you're not allowing yourself to experience the pain. Or you just be like, I'm just not going to even talk about that because it ain't worth talking about. And so then you shut down because you know that pain is coming up and you don't want to feel that pain. But then in your own perception, you're saying, I'm healed. I'm, I have forgiven. I'm past it. I'm over it. But you're not really over it. OK, and this is coming to my mind and I don't even have this on my uh, list. But at, uh, when someone does something to you and it constantly reminds you of something they did in the past or constantly remind you of something that happened in the past, then you probably have not been healed. You have not released that situation. You have not forgiven. OK, because really, if situations continue to just come up into your remembrance, the Bible tell you that old things pass away, all things become new. So when you're constantly reliving a thing, you're probably not um, having not really forgiven or released the issues to, uh, around that situation. So I just want to say that because that's not on my list, but uh, that's something that the Lord just brought to me as I was saying that. OK. So when you're not trying or needing that person to change so that you could feel better or feel healed or so that you can feel like you finally healed, then you probably have healed. But if you need that person to apologize to you, you need that person to uh, receive justice about what they've done to you, you probably have not forgiven Okay, so you want to search yourself in that because a lot of times we really want justice and, and sometimes we have a right to want justice because someone hurt us. But forgiveness is not based on whether somebody apologizes. It's not based on whether somebody um, actually acknowledges their, um, their transgressions towards you, even though the Bible tells us that we are to bring our alts to uh, one another. Everybody does not comply to that. But even if they don't comply to that, healing is your portion. You have a right to be healed and you can be healed. You can still release that situation even though that person does not say, I'm sorry. Okay. Or even though there's no justice, somebody doesn't get paid back for what they did to you. So if you are constantly needing that, then that's an indication that there is some unforgiveness still in you. Okay. When you, do not, when you do not have to see or no longer desire that person to experience hurt or demise, then you, uh, you probably have forgiven. Your justice is in knowing you have overcome, not in what they do or don't do, okay, or what that, how that life experience unfolds. So I'll say that again. Your justice is not in knowing, it, I mean, your justice is knowing you have overcome. It's not in what that person does or what that person does not do. And it's not based on how the situation unfolds. So forgiveness is not surrounded by those things. They're not surrounded about what other people do, what they don't do. It is surrounded by uh, um, your ability to overcome that situation. Okay. Uh, if you just came in, uh, we're talking about forgiveness, the truths and myths, myths of uh, forgiveness. You can swipe left. Uh, or up and down to share this broadcast. There are going to be some very unique truths that I discuss uh, in this broadcast. Um, and then you can also share it afterwards. So I just wanted to say that, okay? Now, this is something else I want you to understand about forgiveness. Being cordial with someone does not mean you forgive them. And it definitely does not mean you respect them or that you are granting them grace. I'm going to say that one more time. Being cordial with someone does not mean you forgive them. And it definitely does not mean you respect them. And it does not mean you have granted them grace. Okay? Because a lot of times we be thinking, oh, I talked to my baby daddy. Well, at least I'm nice to him. We some, you know, whatever. But that does not mean you have forgiven him for his hurts towards you just because you are cordial. And that does not mean you have granted grace, because if you study grace, grace 
um, is, uh, means that you have had mercy and you have truly released the situation. When God gave us grace for our sins, he's not sitting down saying, well, they did this, they did that, they did this, they did that, they did that, they did that, they did that, but I grant them grace. I just let, you know, he's not saying that. Grace means it's done. Okay. That's what grace means. Okay. Grace also means power. So grace means you have the power to forgive and release that situation. So if you are cordial, but you still got all these unmet things and going on in you when you're talking to your baby daddy or to somebody that hurt you, uh, whatever the case may be, then you're not operating in your power of grace. So you have not really truly forgiven. Okay. So just because you're nice to somebody, well, I saw them today and I walked by them and I ain't cuss them out. That don't mean you forgive them. Okay. I just want to say that being cordial just means you are tolerating them or you could be operating in an unconscious pride to prove that you're the better person in the situation. I'm going to say that one more time. Okay. Being cordial just means you are tolerating them. Or you could be operating in unconscious pride to prove you are the better person. I'm the better person because I'm, you know, I'm not going off. I'm not cussing. I'm not, I'm not disrespecting anybody. I'm, oh, you know, I'm not doing any of that. But that does not mean that you have forgiven. Okay. Even though your actions are not lashing out, your heart and your soul is still bound. Because you're reliving that pain in your head and you're talking yourself through it in your head. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to let this bother me. I'm not going to, you know, and you having all these flashbacks in your mind and in your soul and getting sick to your stomach and on and on and on. And you can't wait for this moment to pass so you don't have to talk to this person anymore or you don't have to deal with this situation anymore. But the truth is you have not forgiven. So being cordial does not mean you have forgiven. Okay. So I just want to say that For, forgiveness is not a verbal declaration of I forgive you. And a lot of times we do this to people when they come to the altar at church, we'll say, you need to release so-and-so. Okay. But you need to explain to that person that you just can't say, I forgive them. A lot of times I'll have a person say to tell why they're forgiving. So I forgive my mother for um, leaving me uh, with that man that abused me. I forgive her for not protecting me and uh, not um, uh, uh, being the mother that she needed to be and for not seeing that I was being molested. I forgive her. And, and you, when, as you are having that person say why they forgive the, then the layers or the bondages that is causing the unforgiveness is being pulled off. But if you just say, I forgive, I forgive Johnny. I forgive Julie. I forgive Juanita. I forgive Jesse. I forgive. That's a, just a, that's just a declaration a wishful thinking. It's not really forgiveness. Okay. It's not because forgiveness is not just a declaration. Forgiveness is an act. It's an act that occurs, okay? Forgiveness is an internal heart transformation and soul transformation. Uh, you can actually feel when you have forgiven someone, okay? Because there is like this liberation in your heart and in your soul in knowing you are no longer bound by that person or that situation, Um Okay, there's like this freedom that comes as you forgive. So even as you say, Lord, I forgive Johnny for not being the dad that I needed him to be to my son. I forgive him for not being the man that I needed him to be for my life. You are pulling those things up out of your soul and out of your heart and liberating yourself from them. Okay, now even as I'm saying this, I hear the Lord saying, once you release them, you can't go back and get them and put them back in your heart. Because a lot of times we do that. We'll release th uh, things and we'll, we'll, uh, we will say, I forgive and we'll go through the acts of forgiveness. And then 
um, there something grips us and we we take it all back and we stuff it back in there. No, you know, whatever. And it, it's not even that we're saying, no, I don't forgive, but we're, we have a soul tie with those things that we just can't let them go. Or they, they have some type of attachment because there's still something else in us that we just can't let that situation go. Okay. So, uh, forgiveness is not just a declaration. It's an act. It's an act. Okay. And it's a transformation that occurs in your heart and in your soul. So you just can't say, I forgive them and think that releases it because it doesn't. Okay. That's part of stuffing. Okay. That's how you stuff. Okay. Uh, all right. So one of the things I want you to understand about forgiveness is that there are, an exchange occurs an exchange from your pains and bondages to, to God's freedom occurs in forgiveness so mark you if you want to turn your bibles to mark 11 25 and 26 i'm just going to read that scripture and, and kind of explain it a little bit more okay so mark 11 25 and 26 says and when ye stand praying forgiving if ye have aught against any that your father also which is in heaven may forgive your trespasses but if ye do not forgive neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. So I'll read that again. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have an ought with any, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Okay, so this is so interesting. That word forgive in this passage of scripture actually means to cry, to forsake, to lay aside, to leave, to let alone, to omit, omit, to put away or to send away. This is interesting. That word also means to suffer. So when you are forgiving, you're actually, there's a suffering because you feel like, oh, I'm having to forgive. Why do I have to forgive? But you are suffering for the sake of, of receiving forgiveness. So you are giving up your, your need to be justified to receive forgiveness and even crying because we don't think that forgiveness is a cry. But when we think about it, Jesus even, he was on the cross saying, forgive them for they know not what they do. He was proclaiming that. He was crying that. He was preaching that. And so you're crying and releasing your situation to God. Okay. It means to expire. So expire means once something expires, it's over and done with. It's not something that you could take with you. So forgiveness means expire. It means to let go, let alone, to disregard, to leave, to not discuss. Now, if you look up the scripture, 11, Mark 11, 25 through 26, that's what that word forgiveness means. Okay, it means to cry, to forsake, to lay aside, to admit, to let alone, to remit, to suffer. Because we feel like we are giving up something, but you are giving up something. Okay? When you forgive. Uh, to expire, to let it go, let it go, just let it go. To, dis to not discuss. So if you're constantly just rehashing, 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 you have not forgiven. Okay? All right. That word in the scripture of uh, trespass in that scripture means to side slip to lapse or to deviate, to unintentionally error or to willfully transgress. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> I don't want this to be a long periscope, but I'm going to just say it again. Then hopefully when you go back and listen to the teaching, you'll get all this. Okay. So transgress in that scripture means to side slip, to lapse or deviate. To unintentionally error or to willfully transgress. It also means to fall or to fault or to have an offense. And of course, transgress means to sin. It means to fall beside or near something or to lapse or devi deviate from the truth or from unrighteous, unrighteousness. So trespass, trespass also means to lapse 
or deviate from truth or unrighteousness. Okay? So, when we harbor unforgiveness, we are side-slipping, okay, into handling matters from, in an unrighteous manner or from a manner that is not truthful. Because even though, we're, even though we're justified in being upset, we're not justified in not forgiving. And so that causes sin, okay? That is why Jesus said, forgive others as I forgive you, okay? We also may be yielding to willful sin because even though we are offended and our offense may be valid, we are choosing to stay bound in offense, and that's not what God wants for us, okay? So you being upset about something and somebody hurting you, you have a right to be upset. But how you handle it, okay, how you handle it determines whether you have fallen into sin or whether you have un, uh, uh, the un, uh, fallen into the sin of unforgiveness, Okay, so that's what I want you to really understand. All right, so also that situation may be hurtful or we know we should forgive, but if our focus is so bound on the hurt that we believe the lie that we can't forgive, we're in sin according to the scripture. Okay, so it's not that we cannot forgive, Okay, the truth is that we're so focused on the fact that we're hurt that we can't implement the principle of forgiving. Okay, and because we are so focused on the hurt, that hurt has become a stronghold and an idol in our lives, and it becomes our God. And it starts to dictate to us how we should handle the situation. My God. Well, I'm going to say that again. Okay. So we know what forgiveness is and we know what trespass is. Okay. So when we have these situations and we are focused on the situation and the hurt and pain, we cannot see the power of forgiveness. And we can't, we, so we get into this mindset where I can't forgive. I can't forgive. I just can't let it go. I just can't let it go. You can't let it go because the situation has become your stronghold. It has become your God, okay? It has become the idol. And guess what? God does not share his throne with another idol. So he cannot share his throne with your pain, okay? And so because he cannot share his throne with your pain and that has become an idol, you cannot see the power of forgiveness, and so God does not go against this truth no matter what that situation is because God says, I would not share my throne with another. So if your situation has become a stronghold and it has become your God, and then you, you're you right here saying, I, but I can't forgive. I want to forgive. I just can't let it go. You know, you're in sin. You're in idolatry. I'm so sorry to tell you that, but it's the truth. You're in sin, Okay. Because that you're now worshiping that thing that hurt you or, or worshiping that pain. It, it is dictating. It's, it's beginning to dictate your life, dictate your relationships, dictate how you interact with people, dictate, you know, your ministry, dictate who, who on your job and how you in it's, it's, it become your, it has become the ruler. It has become the ruler. Okay. So. So whether, so when we consider this scripture, we have to let go of our hurts and our pains and so that God can help us to forgive, okay? When all of this is released, when we release the pains and hurts and, and we focus on God, then we feel that breakthrough that I talked about in the beginning where when you really forgive, there's a true liberation there. Okay, so let's talk about how to let go and forgive. So let's talk about that because we we kind of broken down the myths and broken down the challenges with forgiveness. So let's talk about the how how we let go and forgive. 
So in order to really forgive, you have to give up your need to be vindicated. You have to give that up to God and you have to trust him to handle the matter how, how, however he chooses. Okay. Psalms 51 and 17 says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. Okay. So you, when you give up your need to be vindicated and giving up, um, uh, and trusting God, you are actually sacrificing your brokenness, your broken and contrite heart, because you're already broken. You already crushed. You're destroyed. You feel ripped apart. You feel mentally and physically distraught. However, these feelings have to be sacrificed. Okay. They have to be sacrificed so that you, you have to sacrifice those things, uh, upon the altar of God. That word sacrifice in this scripture actually means a sacrifice of righteousness. So one of the things about, um, uh, when we get into unforgiveness, we get into a place of justified righteous cause righteousness, because we feel justified in our actions and we feel justified in our need to have a uh, vindication. Okay, but you have to sacrifice that. Okay, Sacrif and it also means sacrifice of strife. So when we don't forgive, we are giving it to strife. Well, this scripture, the word sacrifice means to sacrifice your strife. So you have to sacrifice your the need to just constantly go back and forth and be in conflict and try to make this person uh, uh, admit what they did to you and make them uh, pay for what they did to you. You have to sacrifice that. That word sacrifice also means sacrifice of dead things and two dead things. Okay. These things are dead. These un unforgiveness, it causes death in us. It kills our spirit when we don't forgive and we interact with other people. It kills their spirit. People don't want to be around us because we're bitter. We're angry. We resentful. Uh, everything that come out of our mouth is negative. It's dead. It's a dead work. You got to sacrifice it. Okay. Sacrifice of covenant. So that covenant could be sacrifice for the sake of the covenant with God. Okay. That God has a principle of forgiveness. So I'm going to work this, this principle and I'm going to sacrifice in my covenant with God, or it means sacrifice this ungodly covenant of, of unforgiveness. Okay. You have to sacrifice that. Okay. And then it also means a sacrifice, uh, annual sacrifice, sacrifice of Thanksgiving. Okay. So the scripture is a sacrifice. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart of God. You will not, he will, you will not despise. So if you sacrificing these things, you will not, uh, be, uh, um, God will vindicate you. God will work on your behalf. You, you will not be, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sorry that you, uh, you gave up your need uh, your, your anger and your, your need to be vindicated to God. Cause what God is going to substitute is going to be better than anything that you're giving up. Okay. So you want to be willing to sacrifice. Okay. In order to really forgive, you have to release your justifications for remaining bitter, angry, resentful, uh, hurt. Uh, you have to give those things up. You have to uh, give, even though you have a right to be angry, because I don't want you to, uh, the Bible never tells us that we're not going to be angry. We're not going to feel pain. It does not tell us that. Okay. The Bible do tell us how to handle it. So the Bible would tell us, don't, don't let uh, the sun go down to your wrath. So you know that if you go to bed angry, you probably going to be subject to, um, uh, uh, ungodly dreams, nightmares, uh, tossing and turning in your sleep, restlessness. One of the things also happens if you go to sleep angry, you have stuffed and buried those feelings. So the next day they're going to be worse. 
And a lot of times we will say, we'll, we'll be so hurt and we'll say, I just got to sleep. Or if you are prone to depression and you're, you, you have some unresolved issues and hurts and stuff, the first thing you want to do is just sleep. I'm just going to sleep my pain away. I'm going to sleep my agony away. Then you wake up thinking you're refreshed. And that's because it has settled in your heart. It has settled in your spirit. It has settled in your memories. And now when you wake up, you really have become numb to the fact that the pain has become a part of you. It has settled in your bones and in, in your organs, and it, it has become a part of you. So if you if you don't release those things, you think you have forgiven, or you think that you're over it, or you think everything is better, and it's not until you're faced with that situation again. Okay? So you have a right to be angry. You have a right to have pain. But how you handle it, you have to handle it by the principles of God. Okay, so I really want to hone in on that. So I don't want to tell you that you don't have a right to be angry. Somebody molest you, somebody rape you, somebody steal your purse, somebody betray you. You have a right to be upset about that. How you handle it is your key to breakthrough. Okay. All right. So Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30 says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So that word labor means fatigue, to feel fatigue, to work hard, to toil, to be weary, um, to um, be exhausted, to be burdened or gr in grief. So that's what unforgiveness does to us. It, it causes us to toil. Why did this happen to me? I can't believe this happened. Why did they do that to me? I just don't really understand. I just, <laughs> we're toiling. Okay. We're toiling and, um, and we're exhausted. It wears us out. We're tired. We barely can make it through our day. We barely can make it through work, you know, whatever, because that, that unforgiveness and then it's, it, it, it plagues our mind. So it's all that we can think about. So we're constantly thinking about the situation. So it's when our mind is tired, um, it is sending signals to our body. Uh, of tiredness so our body gets tired then our soul is tired and it's just weakness we become weak and heavy laden that word heavy laden means loaded up to be loaded up to be overburdened to have spiritual anxiety okay um to uh, um uh to be loaded with a heavy burden so so that unforgiveness, when you are plagued with unforgiveness, it be, that situation becomes a burden on you. It becomes heavy. It becomes like a load up on you. And you, and you will even admit that my heart's so heavy. It, it, it just feel like, you know, I just can't carry it. It's, and then you have all this spiritual anxiety and stress and, you know, and just on and on and on. But the word says, come to me, all who are laden and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. Now, we know that a yoke is something you put around an animal to pull them, okay? So at present, you have that unforgiving situation around your neck that's pulling you, pulling you, pulling you, and causing you to be weak. You can't carry that burden. You can't carry that situation. So you feel heavy and overworked and oh, just labor and asserting your energy and, oh, just on and on and on, okay? And when that happens, um, it, and it becomes a burden up on you, it, and it has become a part of you, you have to release those things. So you have to take those situations to God. You got to take the pain to God, the hurt to God, the bitterness to God. You got to acknowledge to uh, and that you're hurting. You got to be honest how you're hurting. You know, you even got to say, if you got to say, God, I feel like killing somebody. I feel like, I feel like chopping somebody's head off. I feel like I am so hurt. I am so angry. I'm enraged. I, I feel shame. I feel guilt. I feel filthy. You know, being molested made me feel filthy. It made me feel disgusted. It didn't want me to, it made me feel like I didn't want to be touched again. I feel you, you got to be honest with the Lord about how you feel so that yoke can break off of you. Okay. So God does not want you to lie about how you feel. He wants you to be honest about how you feel. 
okay? And he desires you to be able to uh, share those honest feelings with him so that he can exchange your hurts. In Psalms 56 and 8, it says, Thou tellest of my wanderings. Put thou my tears in a bottle. Are they not in thy book? The good news says, you know how troubled I am. You have kept a record of my tears. So God knows how troubled you are. He knows the wanderings and the challenges and trials and tribulations have you, you, that you have gone to through. You know, he, he, he sees the tears that you have shed. Okay, it says, he put my tears in a bottle. He sees those tears, okay? So it's not like God wants you to lie about that pain because he see that pain. But he knows that there is an exchange to better. Hebrews 4 and 15 in the New International Version, it says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. For we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. So Jesus... Uh, understands and empathizes with our weaknesses. He's not saying that this life is not difficult. He's not saying that unforgiveness is easy. He had to forgive too when he was on the cross. He said, forgive them for they know not what they do. He had to acknowledge that, hey, these people beating me up. They stabbing me. They whipping me. They, you know, they, they, um, th making uh horrible comments against me they're yeah you know, they're 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 they betrayed me for no reason but lord i forgive them for no for they know not what to do he had to go through it okay so he understands that it hurts okay so you have to be able to release those things to god and be willing to give those things to god and and you you may have to keep keep going back to god and saying one time i went through a situation where every day and even throughout the day, I have to keep keep telling God that that really hurt me, and I, I'm 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 struggling. I need you. I I need I need you to help me. Um, I release this hurt to you. I release this pain to you. Uh, right now, I'm feeling just uh, still more bitterness for what happened to me. I still feel betrayed, and I, I just need you to to uh, to help me to to cleanse this out of me. You might have to keep going to God. Another reason why you might have to keep going to God, because sometimes we have generational roots and propensities to anger, to bitterness, to unforgiveness, to resentment, to re retaliation that is lodged within us or in our generational line. So when things happen to us, it like roots into those propensities. Pro propensities into those generational sins and roots okay and so when they intertwine it it, it becomes like double fold and trying to release a situation so you know if we think about how our moms act and our grandmas act and our grandfathers and on and on and we could think oh yeah auntie she 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 got some bitterness going on. She got some anger going on. She got some, you know, or whatever the case may be. She just have not forgiven grandpa yet. She has not forgiven that husband yet or whatever the case may be. And then you see your mom going through that and, and your dad and just on and on. And you have all these generational roots and propensities. And then something happens to you and you're trying to forgive. You have to think about is this bitterness intertwined in my family line is this unforgiveness intertwined in my family line and now because i'm having a problem with forgiving or i'm i'm, I'm uh, experiencing this situation it's connecting and and trying to uh become solid in me and stronghold me and so sometimes you might have to batter that thing to break that break that inherited um uh root that is there Okay, so sometimes you may have to go through a process of deliverance and continually taking things before God and then cleansing out any uh, uh, generational unforgiveness, anger, uh, bitterness, resentment, re need for retaliation and murder and on and on and on. And people in your family may have killed people that hurt them. They may have, uh, you know, vindicated themselves or what have you if they have done those things and you're struggling to release the situation you might want to think about am i being prone to that generationally okay so those roots and propensities have to be dealt with um you also it may be difficult to release a situation because you have piled 
situations of unforgiveness upon one another. And so then when this big thing happens where you realize I really need to forgive, but you just can't let it go. It's probably because you have some layers and layers and layers of unforgiveness that need to be done. Maybe you just said, I forgive her and you move forward, but you really didn't forgive her. You just move past the situation. Oh, I forgive him. And then you just move forward, but you really haven't forgiven. And then this big old thing happens and you like, Oh, I'm just so bound. I, I got to forgive. And you're a study trying to break this thing, but there's layers of unforgiveness there. And so you have not forgiven that person. You have forgiven that person. You haven't forgiven that person. And so you can't forgive, uh, that forgiveness won't lift up off of you because it's intertwined in a whole bunch of, of things that need to, uh, be released. If, if that is, uh, if you don't release those things, then that forgiveness stays there. So a lot of times it's not that we, God is not helping us to forgive or we haven't forgiven. We have other things that we may need to forgive for. Um, it is so important uh, to know and to acknowledge when you're offended and even to search a situation out because sometimes things may happen to us and we, we might think, oh, that didn't even bother me. But you want to make sure it doesn't bother you because sometimes we can, could just become so used to pain or used to people doing things to us to we just shake it off but shaking it off isn't unforgiveness isn't forgiveness shaking it off means i'm just i'm just gonna let that go i'm just gonna i'm not gonna even deal with that that's what shaking it off means and then uh uh but everything that's going on internally and in your soul is still forming <laughs> and it's still uh manifesting in your soul and in your spirit and so, uh, even though you may be consciously still washing the dishes, still cooking for your husband and on and on and being able to talk to him at the dinner table, if you really have not searched yourself to see if you are offended, you are burying that offense. You are stuffing it. And so that's not forgiveness. Okay. And you may not even realize that you have that in there. So you have to really be careful and conscious of that. So it's okay to search a situation out, uh, when, as they come along and, and make that your lifestyle. Did that offend me? And even think about, and then even consider it. Yeah, that did offend me, you know, or whatever. So that you could search those things out with that person and with God. And if you can't discuss it with that person, you could discuss it with God. So he can really release those things, uh, from you. Okay. Um, my last scripture is Psalms 34, 18 through 19. It says the Lord is nigh unto them that are a broken of a broken heart and save such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. So that word, um, Afflictions means miseries, it means wrongdoings, it means adversities, it means evil doings, it can mean sickness and disease. So many are your afflictions, okay? There can be layers and layers and layers of afflictions and hurts, miseries, wrongdoings, adversities. Uh, actually, they're a part of life that cannot be avoided. And the reason why they cannot be avoided is because this world is imperfect. So, and people are imperfect. We're all imperfect. The world is imperfect. So no matter how much you may try to build a little fantasy life to protect yourself, you can't, uh, you can't. Okay. That's why it's important to be healthy and how you handle situations because you can never avoid pain. You could try, but you never can. It's actually painful to try to avoid pain because you're, you're, you're using pain and the whale of pain to try to avoid pain. So that's agony in and of itself. Okay. So the word says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver us from them all. So many can be your sicknesses, your evil doings, your adversities, your hardships, people hurting you and just on and on and on. But God can deliver you. God will deliver you. Okay. So that's the end of my teaching. I don't know if you have any questions. If you do, you can put them up on the screen now. If you don't have any questions, then I'll pray uh, for us. But if you do have any questions, um, you can put them on the screen. I know that was a lot. So I encourage you to go back and listen to this um, broadcast. Uh, hopefully it, um, it 
it's going to stay up and we can put it into an mp3 and I can make it available on my page as well for you to go back and listen to it because these are principles that you have to practice continually until they become your lifestyle. Okay, so I'm not saying forgiveness is easy. I'm just saying there are principles to forgiveness and forgiveness does work. It does work. Another thing that's coming to my mind, even as I said that, is that you have to, sometimes you may have, you may have unforgiveness towards God and you need to release God. Okay. Now, sometimes God may ask us to do things um, and, and put us in situations and they may cause persecution, persecutions, they may cause hurts, and then we become angry because of that, uh, uh, that persecution. We may become uh, frustrated and challenged, and then we, we may not even realize that we're mad at God about that. And so it's important to recognize that if you have church hurt, if you have uh, people that, you know, loved ones that may have died suddenly or, um, or hurt you or whatever the case may be, and you are angry at God about that person dying or having to be at that church where that person hurt you and on and on and on, you may have to release God, ask God, say, I forgive you or, or, and even repent because <laughs> I had to repent for having the audacity to be mad at God. Okay. Cause I, then that means that I'm not, um, I'm not trusting that God knows what's best for me. Okay. And so sometimes we're not comfortable with admitting that we, I have had God tell me, I'm sorry. When I have said, I, it hurt me to be at that church. It hurt me to go through that situation. It hurt me to, when that person died and I prayed and prayed and prayed for, for them to live, or I didn't even know that they was just going to die. That, that hurt my heart, you know, whatever. And I'm angry about it. I'm, I have to admit that I'm angry at you. I have no right to be angry at you, Lord, but I, I'm angry at you, you know, whatever. And God don't say, well, you ain't got no right to be angry at me. Yeah, I'm God. He He's not going to say that. I've never heard him say that. He'll say, I'm sorry you hurt, you know. I'm sorry that losing that person caused you pain. I'm sorry, you know, the betrayal at that church or at, at your job hurt you. You know, I'm sorry you had to go through that. I didn't put you in that situation for them to abuse you, you know, but I people have free choice. They have free will, how they handle situations, but I'm here to heal you. I mean, you will hear God talking to you like that. Okay. Uh, so I agree. This, this definitely should be a mass deliverance on this, um, on this topic, uh, because a lot of times we just tell people that they should forgive and they don't know what that means or how to release that. And if you don't teach them the principles of forgiving, that's why, um, kingdom wellness counseling and mentoring center is so important because we throw scriptures and cliches at people, but we, if we don't teach them principles, if they don't have the principles to how things work, they cannot implement those things. And so they're just walking around saying, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. And they don't really forgive. They walk around saying, I believe God, I, for I believe God, I believe God. But they're not being healed because nobody's telling them that you're, you're, you, you, you have to work your faith. Or nobody's telling them that that, that, that issue that they need healing from may be uh, rooted in unresolved issues. And how do I get over those issues, you know, or whatever. I'm actually in... Um, Muncie, Indiana. So I'm in Muncie, Indiana. So nobody is telling you those things. Okay. So when people aren't telling you those things, you're trying to operate principles that you have no revelation of. And when there is no revelation, there is no vision. And guess what? When there is no vision for how to forgive to how to receive healing, you will perish in your sickness. You will perish in your frustrations and agony. Uh, I'm three and a half hours away from Chicago. Okay. You will perish. So I just, uh, that was just something that as I was talking that came to mind. So I just felt the Lord wanted me to say that too, that you may have to ask to forgive God and, or you have to forgive God. So, uh, are there any other questions? Cause if not, I'm going to, uh, pray. It's, uh, I don't, I didn't want to prolong the scope, but I did want to give an opportunity for people to ask questions, uh, or to make comments. 
uh, I would encourage you to share this uh, word because even as I was going through it uh, this morning in my personal prayer time, um, there are principles that came to mind and revelation that I received that most don't have. And so it is just so important that we start to be healthy in how we really apply the principles of the word or we continue to make people think that the word doesn't work when it really does work. Okay. Uh, so, uh, please share the broadcast once it's over. And like I said, we will make it into an MP3 and put it on, uh, Facebook for you to be able to listen to, you can actually download it and then listen to it. Okay. So since there aren't any questions, let's, let's pray. Lord, I just uh, thank you for this word and revelation that uh, went forth this morning. Uh, Lord God, I just pray for every person that is on this broadcast and that will listen to this broadcast. I just pray right now, Lord Jesus, that this word become rooted and grounded in their um, in their spirits right now, Lord God, uh, that they have received a download, uh, Lord God, of how to truly forgive, Lord Jesus, and that uh, they will begin to practice and operate in it, Lord Jesus, and really uh, bring it forth your liberation of forgiveness, uh, Lord God. I just stand with them right now for uh, repenting. We just repent for any ways that we have not forgiven, Lord God, any ways that we have not been truthful about things that have hurt, it, hurt us, any way that we have stuffed um, um, pains and hurts, Lord God, and we have not used, um, um, your, your principles, uh, Lord God, to really forgive. We just repent for that right now. Any way that, uh, unforgiveness has become a sin in our lives, we just repent for that right now. We ask for your forgiveness, Lord God, of every way that we, uh, have not forgiven and that we have been bound to, uh, uh, a lack of forgiveness, Lord God. We just uh, uh, ask for your forgiveness right now, Lord, Lord Jesus. We just uh, uh, receive a truth, Lord Jesus, that we have to give up our justifications and our, our uh, self-righteousness and our pride, Lord God, and even give up our hurts and pains to you, uh, Lord Jesus, in order to forgive. Uh, we just come into that revelation right now, and we just come against all fear, of giving up that pain because we fear uh, uh, being vulnerable again, or we fear, we think that if we never uh, emit the pain or, or, or never uh, dissolve or absolve the pain, uh, Lord God, that it'll happen to us again. So we break that lie right now in the name of Jesus. We break the soul tie with that lie right now in the name of Jesus. We break the soul tie of, uh, with pain, uh, Lord Jesus. Um, and with even vows that we had have made that we will get that person back or we vowed to hurt them. We vowed never to forgive. We, we vowed never to forget what happened to us. We break those vows right now. We repent for those covenants that we have made with the sin of unforgiveness. We break those covenants right now. We tear them up in the spirit and in the natural realm. We break the soul ties with them right now. We declare any identity between us and them right now. Lord God, we just loose your blood to cleanse and purge and break those soul ties in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, uh, Lord God, we come before you admitting our hurts, being honest about what has hurt us, honest that, um, uh um, uh, that sin, uh, that the sins and the trespasses that have been done against us hurt, Lord God. We, we become honest that, uh, uh, it hurt us to be raped. It hurt us to be, uh, to be molested. It hurt us to be betrayed. It hurt us to be abused. It hurt us to lose our job. It hurt us, uh, when our pastor said those negative things to us. It hurt us when people did not see who you were in us and see who we are in, in, in the earth realm. It hurt us. When when our mother and our father left us and never wanted to be in our lives, these things have hurt us, Lord God. We 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 acknowledge the hurt. We acknowledge that the pain, Lord God, hurts our heart to the point where we don't even want to get up in the morning, where we don't even want to uh, go throughout our day, uh, Lord God. We acknowledge the heavy weights and burdens of them, Lord Jesus, and uh, uh, we acknowledge those things right now. We admit that we have stuffed 
pain, uh, Lord God, till we have become numb and we don't even know how to feel again or we fear feeling, uh, Lord God, because we don't want to feel the pain. Uh, we acknowledge that today, Lord God, and uh, we ask for grace and even as we are acknowledging it, that you will take the pain away, that we don't have to feel it again, Lord God. Uh, so we just are coming to the truth about how we really feel about these offenses and these sins and trespasses that have been done against us about these alts that have been done against us we come into a truth about them spiritually emotionally physically lord god soulishly even now in the name of jesus we recognize uh lord god uh, uh the pain we recognize the hurt lord god we recognize uh the truth uh lord jesus that we have to be honest about how they uh how they um how they hurt us, Lord God, so we can uh, receive the exchange of forgiveness. So we just do that right now. I want you to just begin to do that even as I am praying. Begin to acknowledge the hurts, acknowledge the pains, acknowledge uh, who the person was and what they did to you, and, uh, and just begin to tell God that truth right now. Just begin to share those things with God. We just acknowledge, uh, uh, Lord God, uh, these situations. We acknowledge that we have buried things such that we don't even remember all of what happened to us, Lord God. But we know, uh, Lord God, that something happened. So we acknowledge that we don't have to relive the memory because your grace uh, is sufficient to cover that. Uh, but we acknowledge that we, we don't even remember half of what happened, uh, Lord God, or that it's even covered up in pain. Lord Jesus, but we know that something has happened to us, uh, Lord God, so we acknowledge that we have pain about being molested, even though we don't even remember uh, uh, all of the events. We acknowledge uh, uh, that uh, things that may have happened when we was two and three and years old, Lord God, even though we may not remember all the things surrounding it. We don't have to remember all the things surrounding it, but we know the pain is there, so we acknowledge that pain today, and we are willing to forgive whoever we need to forgive, Lord God to release that pain. We break the power of pain right now off of our memory recall, off of our uh, off of our memories right now in the name of Jesus. We break the power of pain off of our hearts, out of our souls. We bind up all spirits of pain right now in the name of Jesus and every way that they hinder us in being able to forgive. We, we gut out roots of bitterness. Uh, we gut them out right now. We, we, we command waters of bitterness to dry up in our souls, dry up in our hearts, dry up in our minds right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, we command, uh, the spirits of bitterness to be bound and cast out personally and generationally, uh, the spirits of unforgiveness and anger anger, rage, resentment, retaliation, murder, um, the desire for murder, uh, the spirits uh, to be bound and cast out and the curses of them to be broken generationally. We gut out the roots and the propensities of these uh, spirits and of these strongholds. We gut them out generationally and personally out of our generational line on our mother's side and our father's side all the way back three, four generations, even all the way back to Adam and Eve. We just gut these things out right now in the name of Jesus. We speak a cleansing and a purging of them of, uh, out of our souls, out of our hearts, out of our minds, from around our navel and our generational line and our bloodline. We decree that they are being cleansed and purged right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we break their power to intertwine with any present situations that we may be going through uh, or, and we we break the soul tie between uh, generational lines and with things that have occurred in the past. We break uh, the power and the way that they have stronghold and intertwined themselves. We, we uncall them right now in the name of Jesus. We break their power and their hold right now in the name of Jesus. And we lose the blood of Jesus to cleanse and purge the generational line in these areas. Cleanse and purge us personally in these areas. We lose the sword of the word uh, where the uh, Lord says the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty to liberate us from these things that uh, God bore curses for us so we are liberated from curses we break uh, we, we decree they're broken and the blessings of forgiveness is coming upon us and healing us now in the name of Jesus 
In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we give up needs to be right. And so we hold on. So we give that up right now. We re we suffer, Lord God, in in our uh, sacrifices of just releasing, uh, Lord God. Uh, we give we 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 feel like we're suffering, so we give up that suffering right now, uh, Lord God, to be healed, uh, Lord God. We get broken before you, Lord God, even more, uh, so that we will not be despised in our own unforgiveness. We get broken before you and say we need healing. We we need your wholeness. We need your help. We need your ability to forgive. We need you to teach us how to operate in the principles of forgiveness, Lord God, so that we can let go. We get broken right now and we sacrifice. We sacrifice this brokenness. We sacrifice this hurt. We sacrifice this pain. We sacrifice the strife and the conflict and the need to go back and forth with people until they uh, admit what happened to us, Lord God, or to prove what happened to us. We sacrifice that right now. We, we stop giving it energy. We stop allowing it to be our idol. We renounce the idol of unforgiveness today. We break the uh, stronghold and the altar that we have built in our souls, in our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives, and how that, uh, that altar has intertwined in our personality and our patterns and taken over how we interact in relationships and how we interact in life. We tear that altar down today in the name of Jesus. We renounce that idol right now the idol of vindication, the idol of unforgiveness, the idol uh, of hurt. We cast it down. We break it down right now in the name of Jesus. We say that we will not try to make you share a throne with idolatry of unforgiveness, with the need to be right, to, with the need to vindicate and avenge. We will not do that. We break the yoke of it off of our necks right now in the name of Jesus, and we take on your yoke of forgiveness. Lord God, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So we surrender those things right now. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we cleanse and purge ourselves through the blood of Jesus and the fire of God, of every pain of it, every hurt of it, every stench and stain of it, every sensation of it, every way that it has lodged in our bones, every way that it has lodged in our stomachs, every way that it has lodged in our hearts, and even how it has caused sicknesses, Lord God, heart disease and, and heart pains and nauseousness and ulcers and all kind of other sicknesses and diseases because we we, uh, it, it has become a part of us. We, we Even as we repented for stuffing, Lord God, we command everything that has uh, uh, intertwined in our body parts and in our flesh and has become sickness and disease because of the stuffing. We speak a cleansing and a purging of it right now. Everywhere anger has become arthritis and, and uh, a tiredness and weariness and every way bitterness has become stomach pains and sickness and eating on our gallbladders and eating on on our appendix and eating on our digestive system. We, we command a cleansing and a purging of that right now in the name of Jesus. We command a cleansing and a purging of every way that's eaten on our hearts and our blood system and calling blood, high blood pressure and low blood pressure and all of these things, Lord God, that are manifesting as anger and rage and unforgiveness and, and, uh, and, and, and retaliation and it is becoming sickness and, and uh, mental illness. It's, it, it, it has split our minds minds. Uh, we command the cleansing of those things in our minds right now in the name of Jesus. We command anger to come out of the mind, uh, 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 unforgiveness to come out of the mind, uh, bitterness to come out of the mind right now, resentment to, from coming out of the mind. We command every little girl and little boy spirit and every split in our personality, every altered personality of anger, of every, every altered personality of unforgiveness. We, we bind you and cast you out of us today. Come out of our minds right right now in the name of Jesus. We command our mind to become whole, to become one right now. We reject uh, every split, uh, every double-mindedness. We speak wholeness to our personality. We speak wholeness to our identity. 
We speak wholeness to our mind right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We bind every spirit of uh, mental illness and uh, double-mindedness right now. And we command you to come up out of there. Uh, come up out of the mind right now in the name of Jesus. Come up out of the heart, out of the soul right now in the name of Jesus. Come up out of the personality and every way you've intertwined yourself in the identity. Come up out of there right now. We decrease singleness of heart, singleness of mind right now. We are sing Single in our heart, single in our mind, healthy in our heart, healthy in our mind. One, one right now in the name of Jesus. Me, myself, and I am being focused uh, on uh, on forget, uh, unforgiveness, being focused on the pain and the hurt rather than uh, renewing the mind. We, we speak a cleansing and a purging of that right now. And we command healing to that right now in the name of Jesus. We just wash and cleanse of all grief and loss that has come from being betrayed, come from being uh, hurt, uh, 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 we, we, we command a restoration, restoration of purity, restoration of peace, restoration of joy, restoration of love, restoration of being willing to love again, being willing to be loved again, restoration of, uh, of, of truth that uh, even as people has, have abandoned us, God will never leave and forsake us. He's right there with us. And truth that God has put people in our heart, put people in our lives to be walk in uh, uh, life with us, to do life with us. So we are not left. We are not forsaken. We don't have to be, uh, we don't have to keep pushing people.